Τρία παιδιά διαγνώστηκαν με λευχαιμία και ένα κόμμα με όγκο άλλη μορφή. Μάλιστα, η τελευταία διάγνωση έγινε πριν από λίγε ημέρε. Όλα αυτά τα περιστατικά στη μέση Αγιά τη Πάτρα. Ο διευθυντή τη Μεθπέδων του Πανεπιστημιακού Νοσοκομείου τη Πάτρα, Ανδρέα Ηλιάδη, έκανε την αποκάλυψη ότι από μια έρευνα που είχε κάνει στην περιοχή τη Έξω Αγιά, αποκαλύπτει ότι τα περιστατικά λευχαιμία σε παιδιά μπορεί να σχετίζονται με τη λειτουργία κεραίων και νητή τηλεφωνία που υπάρχουν στην περιοχή. Οι κάτοικοι τη περιοχή εδώ και καιρό έχουν προχωρήσει σε κινητοποιήσει για την κεραία και νητή τηλεφωνία που τοποθέτησαν σε ταράτσα πολυκατοικία στην οδό Αυστραλία και την έχουν καμουφλάρει με τέτοιο τρόπο ώστε να μην μπορεί κάποιο να αναγνωρίσει περί τίνο πρόκειται. Όμω τη λίστα έρχεται να προσθεθεί μια ακόμα κεραία η οποία τοποθετήθηκε στην πάροδο Αρέθα. Όχι, μόνο μία ήξερα. Ήξερα αυτή η πέρα που γίνανε οι κινητοποιήσει. Τίποτα άλλο. Είναι πολύ επικίνδυνο το για την ξέρω, υγεία. Το ξέρω, το ξέρω, το ξέρω. Έχουμε και μικρά παιδιά εδώ. Είναι επικίνδυνο, τι να πω. Η κεραία κινητή τηλεφωνία που βρίσκεται καμουφλαρισμένη σε ταράτσα πολυκατοικία κοντά στην Αρέθα έχει προκαλέσει σ' άλλο από κατοίκου τη περιοχή. Οι κεραίε κινητή τηλεφωνία έχουν τοποθετηθεί σε πυκνοκατοικημένη περιοχή που έχει κοντά παιδικό σταθμό, γήπεδο και σχολικά συγκροτήματα. Δασκάλα σε σχολείο τη περιοχή καταγγέλει ότι ένα παιδάκι που μένει δίπλα ακριβώ από το σημείο που τοποθετήθηκε η κεραία διαγνώστηκε με καρκίνο. Έχουν γίνει κινητοποιήσει. Ε, το δικαστήριο έχει αναβληθεί για τον Οκτώβριο. Ε, όλη η γειτονιά συμμετέχει στι κινητοποιήσει αυτέ, καθώ είναι ζωτική σημασία για την υγεία των παιδιών μα. Ήδη ένα παιδάκι που ζει κοντά στην ε, κεραία, ε, έχει νομίζω λευχαιμία το παιδάκι, δεν γνωρίζω ακριβώς την ε, διάγνωση που υπάρχει και τι ακριβώς καρκίνος είναι, αλλά είναι γνωστό σε μας. Πρέπει όλοι να κινητοποιηθούμε καθώς η γειτονιά έχει γεμίσει από κεραίες αυτού του τύπου. Μάλιστα αξίζει να αναφερθεί πως περίπου πριν από ένα χρόνο ένα ανήλικο παιδί που έμενε στη γειτονιά έχασε τη ζωή του από καρκίνο στο κεφάλι. Πάντω, οι επιστήμονε προειδοποιούν για του κινδύνου που ελοχεύουν από τι κεραίε κινητή τηλεφωνία, τονίζοντα ότι μπορούν να προκαλέσουν καρκίνο. Οι κάτοικοι είναι αποφασισμένοι να διώξουν τι κεραίε κινητή τηλεφωνία από την Αγιά, με τον Εξουραϊστικό Σύλλογο τη Συνοικία να ετοιμάζει ακόμα πιο δυναμικέ κινητοποίησει, προκειμένου να επιτευχθεί ο στόχο. So I'd like to begin by asking a few questions. Who knows if they have a wireless smart meter on their home? Okay. And who has their smartphone in their pocket right now? Great. And who's read the fine print in your owner's manual that says that the smartphone should never be within about an inch of the body? So today, I'm going to speak to why we can no longer assume that our wireless technology is safe. Technology has allowed us many benefits. It's connected us to people and to places, and it's brought us convenience that few could have imagined just, just 10 years ago. It's also brought us tremendous economic benefits. If we can look at how technology has increased in our lives in just the last eight years, it started with the iPhone and then tablet computing, ubiquitous Wi-Fi, the smart meter and the smart home, and wearable tech, and now the Internet of Things. If we could imagine how this would look, it would actually look like this. This is an artist's rendition of what Wi-Fi in our public spaces looks like. But how does this affect our bodies? That's the question I want to ask, because this exponential rise in microwave radiation can have effects. And that's what scientists and medical doctors around the world are now saying, especially when it comes to children, because they're going to be affected by this their entire lives. So I actually got into this topic about five years ago. Before then, I was a young technology enthusiast. I always used my smartphone and Wi-Fi. I've worked in Silicon Valley and have a master's degree in engineering. 
So if anyone had told me that wireless technology could have health effects, I would have thought they're crazy. But this all changed for me over the period of about one week. And I started to experience headaches, ringing in the ears, insomnia, and a fatigue and brain fog that I'd never experienced before. And I shared this with a, with a colleague at work. And she said, you know, the exact same thing happened to her husband when a wireless smart meter was installed in their home. So I went home that evening and I checked downstairs. And sure enough, we had a bank of wireless smart meters installed right below our bedroom in San Francisco. So this started me on a, on a journey to learn as much about this topic as I possibly could. And I now have a website about this and I'm contacted by people all around the world every day who are experiencing the exact same things. It can be when they have a wireless smart meter installed or a new Wi-Fi router or even a cell tower placed across the street from their home. These are the common symptoms that people start to experience. This is actually from a published paper on the health effects of wireless smart meters. So, just here in the Bay Area, I'm in touch with dozens of people who've had their lives changed by this. Medical doctors, high school principals, teachers and students, IT professionals, and even entrepreneurs. These are people who had a normal life and then over a short period of time went to where they could no longer work, where they could no longer go to an office. Some of them actually have had to move out of their homes because they can't be in an environment which is normal now for most people. I've been in touch with people around the world who've become homeless because of this. There's many people that's actually happened to. And unfortunately, I know of people who've actually taken their lives because there's essentially no place they can go. And this is something that society does not yet recognize. My own life has been tremendously changed by this. Uh, after that first exposure to, to wireless smart meters, now I, I, I can no longer be in an environment with strong Wi-Fi for very long. So I can't go to my work the way I used to be able to. Most environments are now essentially toxic to me. So even finding a safe place to live has become very difficult. Imagine not being able to, to live in an apartment building where everyone has Wi-Fi or to be able to live next to a cell tower. This is, what a, uh, this is actually a proposed cell tower here in Berkeley. The residents have actually stopped it for now, but most churches and most schools now have cell towers on them. And so it exposes the people around them and, of course, the students who go to, go to those schools. This is a cell tower in San Francisco. That brown thimble on top of the telephone pole is a cell tower. And these are being placed every couple blocks. So you could have an amazing home. And then one week, a company can come and put a cell tower right outside your window. So this is something that's happening throughout the Bay Area. And it's going to be happening throughout the United States. So it makes it so that people like myself have a hard time finding a place to live, but it also is ratcheting up the exposure of the entire population. So you might be asking, perhaps some people are being injured by this, but if you're not feeling it, it's probably not that big of a deal. And I think that's a very common experience. But it's not as simple as saying that just a few unfortunate people are being affected by this. Because what the science shows is that we're all affected on some level, whether we can feel it or not. And the reason is, is because essentially our bodies are electric. Every cell in our body communicates using tiny electric signals. It's how our nervous system operates. So to think that we could put an exponential amount of microwave radiation into our environment and not feel effects is simply false. To illustrate this, I actually had many friends come to me when I started to experience this, and they would say, 
Jeremy, are you sure you aren't making this up in your head? And I thought this too by myself at the beginning. But then a year or two later, they would come to me and they'd say, you won't believe it. But now I'm feeling pain in my arm when I use my cell phone or when I put it to the head or when a new Wi-Fi router is, is, is installed. So this is something where when people have a, more of an exposure, more people are being affected. And it's not just headaches and, and insomnia. It's much more serious things, such as infertility, DNA damage, and eventually cancer. This is what the research is starting to show. And you don't have to take my word for it. I encourage you to start researching this for yourselves. If you simply Google EMF research, this is a screenshot of what you'll find. The World Health Organization is the first link there. And they actually, in 2011, came out and said, this wireless technology is possibly carcinogenic. And this is one of the most interesting things I've found. The Federal Communications Commission is who is supposed to be regulating wireless technology. But if you look at the regulations, they're almost 20 years old. So that means our most advanced technology is using science that's at least 20 years old. But not only that, they're based on a concept which is nearly 50 years old, which says if microwave radiation does not heat us, then it can't possibly hurt us. But there's now hundreds of studies that show that this is false. So how is it that we have a regulatory body that's not protecting the public? Well, like many issues, like many public health issues in our country, you end up having industry influencing the regulatory body. And that's what's happening here. So you have a revolving door between the wireless lobby and the FCC commission. So that's what's happening. Plus, the science is heavily influenced by industry funding. This is a study by Dr. Henry Lai. He looked at 326 studies based on the biological effects of cell phone radiation. He found that about half of the studies showed effects and half didn't. That's pretty normal for this type of research. But what he found that was interesting was that if you looked at who funded the studies, 70% of the independent studies showed effects and only 32% of the industry funded studies showed effects. So you see that there's an influence in money on this topic. Just like many other topics, tobacco is another one where essentially the industry funded science that was going to show their products were safe. Υπάρχουν κάποιε αιτιολογίε που έχουν να κάνουν με την ακτινοβολία, ότι η ακτινοβολία ενδεχομένω να είναι βλαπτική. Είναι απολύτω λάθο. Η επιστήμη λέει ότι η ακτινοβολία είναι περίπου στο 1 πέμπτο τη ακτινοβολία που έχουμε σήμερα με το 4G. rolling out powerful 5G technology throughout the United States. However, some studies show a link between cell phone radiation and cancer. Dan Cohen has the story. The race is on among cell phone providers to upgrade to fifth generation wireless technology or 5G. That would require installation of new equipment across the U.S., a gargantuan effort every wireless company is already working on individually. 5G uses high frequency waves that support faster speeds but don't travel as far, requiring a network of antennas built in closer proximity than the existing infrastructure. Wireless companies plan to use light poles, street lights, anything to minimize their expenses. But health experts worry about potential risks associated with exposure to radiation from cell phone antennas. Cell phones emit low levels of radio frequency energy, or RF. In 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer identified RF fields as, quote, possibly carcinogenic to humans. A study in Sweden found that Swedes who talked over cell or wireless phones for over 25 years were at three times the risk of developing glioma, a brain tumor that is often malignant, than those who use them for less than a year. And in March, a large-scale lifetime study of lab animals confirmed the link between cell tower radiation and cancer. The animals were exposed to levels legally permitted by the United States Federal Communications Commission. 
I discussed these studies with Dr. David Carpenter, director of the University of Albany's Institute for Health and the Environment. They show a very significant increase in glioma and glioblastoma only on the side of the head where you use the cell phone regularly and increasing with risk uh, the longer you use it. They also have some evidence that the younger you are when you start to use the cell phone, the greater the risk. Carpenter said these risks can be avoided by using the speaker function or an earpiece and keeping the phone a short distance away from all parts of the body. But the 5G rollout will effectively expose the entire population to dangerous effects. The rollout of 5G is very frightening because what this is going to do is place a mini cell tower every 300 meters along every residential street in the country. And that's going to mean that nobody is going to be able to escape the radiation that comes from those 5G devices. If you walk down the sidewalk, if you live in a house there, uh, you're going to be continuously exposed. Countries like China, Italy, India, and Russia have far more stringent regulations over cell tower radiation than the United States. Our regulators, dominated by physicists and engineers and not health effects people, ignore all of that evidence and uh, therefore have standards that are totally unrealistic and out of date.